first off, thank you for having us here today. Um, as you guys all know, um, I am uh, Jeff Slattery. I was the high school principal here for 10 years, and then for almost 10 years, now I'm the Fort County Prisoner Superintendent. I'm pretty loud, so if you guys don't mind if I stand up there, is that okay? Yeah, really. You guys okay with that? Yeah, perfect. So, you know, uh, working in, I'm going to say public education as a teacher, coach, and then administrator at Hicksville, and now going into the superintendent role, it all seemed very similar, the same, no matter what, I'm going to say, school district you're in. Going to Career Tech at, at Fort County Career Center was definitely a major change. And in my mind, I didn't think it would be that different. But once I got there, I realized it is, it is vastly different in the Career Center than it is at our local high schools um, in, in the Northwest Ohio area. So, you know, some, some quick history again, you know, uh, the story of Fort County started in 1966. It actually opened up the class of 68, or excuse me, the class of 69, so the fall of 1968. Uh, the cost of the project back then was $5 million, almost just a drop in a bucket compared to today. And of course, since its inception, it's continued to grow. Uh, the campus itself is under five acres now. I mean, it's a massive, sprawling campus right next door to Northwest State. And of course, you can see it's located almost in the center of the Fort County area and it serves 22 associated school districts. You know, what is career technical education? Well, it's a way to prepare kids for their future and, and be job ready. Now, we're not teaching them everything they know, but we are introducing them to an idea or an interest that they may have and expanding upon it. And I would say that's probably as an educator, is probably the coolest part about being over at Four County is, you know, at Hicksville, it's not that we weren't doing things that were impactful, but you, you have a lot of students that, I'm gonna to go to college, I'm gonna join the workforce, I'm gonna to go to the military. We talk a lot about that, okay? And you kinda, of, you're not sure where you're gonna be. And I guarantee if I pulled everyone in this room, we all went that route. We thought we, what, we knew what we were gonna do, and I guarantee we're all in a different spot now than what maybe we originally thought we were gonna be. And in Four County, every day, you know, these kids come in, they select a program, and that program itself, it's not just about the entry level opportunities for them, but as they expand upon it and move through it, and they become a senior, a lot of our programs have job placement opportunities. These kids are working in industry, working in factories, working in construction, um, and, and, it, and it's an awesome sight to see is the Walden Electrical Programs, and these kids are working with like Bill Brothers Construction. You know, so they go to school for half a day for their academics, and the second half of the day of their senior year, most, most of them that are in those programs are going out and working and getting, a, again, a greater grasp on those skills. And, not everyone is gonna continue along that path. Sometimes it's, you know what, I have interest in this, but this isn't what I wanna do for a living. But either way, it's a win-win. Uh, go ahead and click right again, okay. It won't go. Oh, be patient, hold on. Of course, it's gonna get stuck on a slide, isn't it? So programs offered at Fort County Career Center. There are 30 different programs going from ag diesel, you know, building trades. You, know, you, think, of, you think about a lot of the hands-on blue collar jobs we have, but it's also expanded to programming medical technologies. We have nursing programs, early childhood education. You know, you'd be amazed on how many kids now go to Fort County and actually are doing College Credit Plus, which uh, we have more kids at Fort County completing College Credit Plus courses than any other high school in the area. All right, now we have a larger population, of course, but still we have a lot of kids that are going from Fort County to college, not just straight into the workforce. How do we decide what program to offer? You know, it's based on trends, needs, community, and employment. Now, many of you know that uh, last year we applied for a, or actually we submitted a proposal for a grant in career technical education, and Fort County Cursor received a $14.79 million grant. Um, that grant is going to be used to build an expansion onto our current schools. We're gonna build about 37,000 square feet. Two brand new welding labs, two brand new electrical labs, all the related classrooms and other ancillary items are gonna be in that piece. It's gonna be about a $17 million project overall because we do have about a million dollars in in-kind funds and then we have a contingency on top of that. But it's been an awesome experience. But again, we were only eligible for that based on trends and needs in our region. We could just say, hey, you know what? We, don't, we want to expand Cosmetology, we want to expand our, uh, our nursing clinic program. We had to work with the four different counties, economic development teams, Defiance, Williams, Fulton, and Henry. We worked with them. 
We received letters of support from uh, different welding companies in the area, different electrical companies in the area to support us. We had to work with the state on all the numbers and the data over the previous five years and of course projected job growth. So it wasn't as simple as just, you know, just uh, throwing a dart at a board and saying, hey, we're gonna expand this program. We had to have that, there had to be a trend, we had to have that need. And honestly, um, there was $200 million available from the biannual budget when we did that. Uh, I was a superintendent for four months, three months, excuse me, three months. I've never written a grant in my life. And so for the first grant I've ever written, uh, to get $14.79 million, which was the biggest one in the state, by the way, from that $200 million, it was pretty awesome. And we're awfully excited. We've actually selected uh, Garmin Miller out of Minster. You know what I'm talking about, don't yeah, you? Yeah. Uh, great group of guys. Uh, Matt Hebner and uh, uh, his team, they are our architect firm. Uh, we just recently selected Rudolph Libby, uh, just outside of Toledo. They're going to be our, uh, our construction manager of risk with a project that big. Um, it was highly recommended that they didn't let Jeff Slattery run the whole thing, and I, I agree. There's no way I wanted to run a $17 million project by myself. And I just tell you how smart I really am, by the way. So, uh, but we're awfully excited about that. And again, we haven't finalized our, um, our plans yet, but those will be finalized and submitted on, on May 3rd. And then probably a week or two after that, we're gonna do a, a, a we're gonna blast out to all the local newspapers and social media, kind of some design images and some information with that. So, thank you. Now, sometimes you think about, you know, how do these kids select their programs? They come out in eighth grade to four counties. They come out to four counties as sophomores. They experience programs of their choosing. They talk to kids that are already graduates of four county or maybe are attending four county currently. And at some point they meet with their guidance counselor at Hicksville or at four county. We have program um, brochures that talk about not just what the program has to offer, but also the jobs that they can get. All right, so we try to educate them as much as possible before they select their program. A misconception I would say is this, you know, when, when, when I was in school in Prime Media, if you were in school, uh, Four County uh, was looked at as, I want to say, a more blue collar um, opportunity in education. Uh, I will say that a lot of the rougher kids or troubled kids went out there, that, that there's no doubt in that piece, okay? Today's Four County, today's career tech is vastly different than that. Like I said before, you think about the college pathways, the college opportunities, the, the job placement opportunities. It's really evolved into this, I, I call it like a, bl a, a blurred lines, I guess, or blurring of the lines between blue collar and white collar. Also, I mean, we're, we're at capacity right now. We've, we've maximized our enrollment out there the last three years. Uh, we see it's gonna continue to grow. That's why, again, we're eligible for that expansion because to go back to that welding and electrical programs, our welding program the last five years was turning away 60% of its applicants. So you have to imagine, just for easy figuring here, if, if we had 100 kids apply, which we didn't, if we had 100 kids apply, we were only taking 40. Same thing with electrical, okay? So we're looking to double that. So technically, in all reality, because I'm not really good at math, we usually have about 55 kids apply to electrical and welding each program, and we usually accept about 20 or 22, okay? So hopefully next time, we can, we can hopefully, two years from now, accept 40 of those 55 kids, hopefully. Um, oh. Go back to that one, will you please? Also, the second thing here I want to talk about is when we talk about enrollment in four counties, a lot of times we don't have to sell the kids on it. We have to sell the parents. Because even, even when I uh, accepted the position in four county, I couldn't believe the number of people that I knew, whether it was my friends or even my some family members, were like, Jeff, you sure you want to bust four county? Remember that place back when you were in school? And I was like, it's going to be okay. It's a great place to be. It's evolved. It's changed. It is. It's a great place to be. And then I try to remind them, too, it's like, it's a numbers game. You know, believe me, at Hicksville, we have fights, we have baby, we have, that stuff happens, okay? But we only have 60 seniors at Hicksville. I have 500 seniors out there. So we're gonna have a little bit more of that. You know, I try to tell every school that. There's a reason, it's a, it's a numbers game. But again, I'm telling you right now, it's evolved. It's an amazing place to be. And, and I've appreciated uh, having the opportunity to be out there as a superintendent and working with the students and the staff. Again, I already covered the College Credit Plus piece. Being next door to Northwest State's awesome. A lot of our kids can do online classes. They're at Fort County, or they just walk right across the parking lot from Northwest State, which is a great opportunity. Uh, also, just to expand upon Fort County, when we think of Fort County, we think of Fort County as, you know, junior and senior program. Now, honestly, my time at Hicksville, being an associate school principal, working with them, 
Um, and then working through the application process and the interview process, I learned so much more about Four County. Uh, number one, yeah, we have a lot of kids out there. We have about 950 kids under the roof, juniors and seniors, doing high school stuff with the programs, with the academics. We also are kind of like, we, we house the county CBI, which is career-based intervention. So a student that maybe has struggled at, let's say at Edgerton, and then goes to Four County, and they don't fit in at Four County, now they go to the career-based intervention program. There's one in Bryan, Ohio, that does the Williams County kids. There's one in um, uh, Wauseon for Fulton County, Napoleon for Henry County, and Defiance for Defiance County. And the kids that go there, those kids, you have to have a job to be eligible because you earn credits through working hours, plus you have to finalize your required academics from the state. All right, and to get these kids to graduate because we want everyone to have a diploma, that way the rest of their life they have more opportunities. I'll go ahead and skip this one, please. Um, community outreach, again, when we talk about job placement, this is something that's really awesome for our kids, but again, we're spanning you know, four county area. Um, there are kids as seniors in welding, electrical, and, and uh, ag diesel, diesel mechanics, things like that, uh, and, and many other programs. They get to a point to where, I'm not gonna say that they've tested out at four county, but it's like, hey, you know what, this kid could benefit a lot more if we get him to work at Arc Solutions, or to go half a day at APT, machining and automation. And so we're always looking for opportunities for students to do that. And I guarantee you this, we have kids mostly getting placed in their communities, but there are some times where they can't be placed in Hicksville because it's not an opportunity. So we send them to Defiance, we send them to Bryan. But again, that's an awesome opportunity. And, and you talk about the job and career fair, that's really impactful too. My first career fair last year was awesome because every school district and different community events to try to do job fairs. We actually bring in employers that match up our programs. And so it's a huge recruiting tool for the employers because they come in and if you're an ag diesel guy and you've got Miller Brothers Construction in there and they need to hire someone to work on their equipment, the kids are much more connected and there's a greater opportunity. Um, prior to handing over to the kids, any questions for me? That, that was the nickel tour on that one. Yes, sir. Jeff, you guys offer any heating and air conditioning classes? Yes, we do. HVAC and plumbing. Yes, we do. I tell you, there's such a need that we see in our business for electricians, plumbing, heating, air conditioning people, desperately. Yeah, and, and, and that's what's interesting. Like I said, Career Tech, our enrollment is up, um, and I see it continuing to grow. But we have to remember that whole mindset piece. Um, for a better part of, I'd say, two decades, <coughs> kids were all told, you need to go to college, you need to go to college, you need to go to college. So what's happening is, it's almost like we've lost a generation of plumbers, electricians, and HVAC people. But now the mindset is, okay, remember, you don't have to go to college. If you want, you can go work with Dave Battershell, you know, or if you want, you can go work with, um, you know, uh, I'm trying to think, uh, Darren Brown, you know, he's an electrician, right? So, but that's slowly coming back, and, and again, I think those opportunities are starting to catch on. They really are. Okay, we need them. But but the parents have to be supportive of that too. Because I mean, I I've, I've got a, a son that's 18 is going to graduate, and we talk to him big time about that. You know, you don't have to go to college. There's other opportunities out there. Um, you know, and we, we gave some other opportunities. We discussed it, you know, at length. But he has chosen to go to BG for business finance. So I'm like, I'm okay with that as long as you have a direction and a goal. Um, but I think it's a great conversation to have with your grandkids and, and, and your kids. Well, as you wrote up the grant, what do you think the numbers are like for the future? I'm sure they projected towards welders and electricians for you guys to <coughs> sink that much money into it. <coughs> so what does the numbers look like for how many welders we're going to need, how many electricians we're going to need here, here in the Midwest, I assume? Yeah, and, and you have to keep in mind, even within the state now, and it's kind of wild because I talked about being career tech, how different it is in K-12 education. I'm amazed at my new position. I have to pay attention to what's going on at Columbus mm -hmm. in Career Tech. I have to pay attention to um, the budgets. I have to pay attention to what DeWine and Lieutenant Governor Keith is doing. I have to pay attention to the regions in Ohio. Because you talk about, you know, we, we all remember offshoring when everybody was sending their companies to other countries for cheaper labor. There's a lot of onshoring going on. COVID had a major impact on, on uh, you know, the supply, the supply and demand of the uh, Supply chain. Supply chain, thank you. Supply chain. And Ohio, right now, the biggest 
the biggest uh, selling point of Ohio is this. Our location, logistically, to the rest of the United States and like 90% of the population, we're right in the middle of that. We're like a, you know, like a, let's say something like, it's something like 90% of the population is within like a, like a, like eight hours of the central point of Ohio. It's something nuts, okay? Getting to the East Coast, going south, down south, I mean, it's wild, okay? But also, fresh water. People have no idea how important fresh water is. And our fresh water supply with our, with our aquifers and things like that are a major impact of what's going on with this, on, with this onboarding. And then when I'm paying attention to what's going on in the government uh, at the state level, <coughs> the whole EV, electric vehicles, the batteries, you know, the auto industry. I'm telling you right now, the Dayton, Columbus, Delaware County area, they're, they're taking up most of that, and that's where that's gonna go. Um, you think about, you know, again, what kind of the rust belt, as people refer to, we're still a part of the auto industry, but we're definitely more the manufacturing region, so what you're asking, and our manufacturing region where we're at is where those jobs are being kind of being pushed. I mean, I don't have a crystal ball to say, well, these are the projected numbers, but that that's what they're telling us at the state level is you need to focus on this. So, any other questions? When you do these job fairs like you talked about, and I don't know if they're just for giving them jobs while they're in school, but you get job, people coming to that job fair, employers from outside the four county area. I would say yes. I think I think we you got to remember we actually have an impact on six counties because like Swanton, uh, they used to attend Four County. I think back in the day they're part of like our, our educational service center, but their kids don't attend Four County. Um, so we have a little bit of an impact in the Lucas County area. Uh, if you look at Harrisville and you look at uh, their district, it actually goes into Putnam County. So you get some of the employers down in Putnam County coming this way, and I have recognized across the border. Over in Indiana, they're coming over. So, but again, it's 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 a really good job fair. It's it's uh, to me, and again, it's as a as the adult in the room, I guess I see. I think it's very impactful. And it's very well done. And then, of course, you know, we talk about the job placement piece. And it was on a slide earlier. You know, we talk about these kids having opportunities. That's what amazed me too. Is you know, I go to these these economic development team meetings or I go to these different programs, and people are like, "Hey, we're looking for a high school kid. Hey, we're looking for a high school kid." We have someone hired in house that I didn't take that contact to. They reach out, make a connection, and we get a student out there working with them their senior year, which is pretty awesome. So, and, and I will say this, you know, all, all 22 of our associate schools, they do a great job educating kids, and I know that, uh, I know that they have opportunities for kids that don't want to go to Fort County, which is great, but if you're talking about truly career tech, I mean, there's a reason career tech funding is different than K-12 funding. We do get, I'm gonna say, more funding at times, but you know what, when you're in the, uh, the diesel building or the ag diesel program, and it's like, hey, our newest tractor's from 2006. Uh, I bet if you ask Bryce or any other farm in this room, big difference between 2024 and 2006 tractors on huh? the navigation systems, the software, I mean, everything, right? So we actually just purchased a 2022 track, John Deere tractor from Kenfeld Group there in Archbold. I mean, we just wrote like a $110,000 check. And that's, that's a cheap one. That's not Okay, you know, there's, I was down at Vantage and they actually have a, like a $400,000 tractor in their in their uh, their lab. And I was like, their tractor is bigger than ours, number one, so I knew it was more expensive. And I was like, how did you guys afford that? And they said, well, actually, we have a lease agreement with them. And they pay so much a month to have their tractors come in. The problem is, the kids can't get as hands on with them. So they're trying to sell those tractors, but they also bring in their people to, to teach, you know, the, the hydraulic systems, the, the electrical systems system things like that which is pretty awesome so it's a totally different world I mean I hate so I was used to buying textbooks you know or hey you know I need some new consumables in my biology lab out there like hey Jeff by the way we need three new lifts and we need an EV vehicle engine it's gonna be hundred thirty thousand dollars and that's what we need to teach our kids how many times have I given blood in the last week Trista you've been up there twice like four so hours sometimes I'm up there and they're, they're, they have to be pokes and I actually draw in blood they have to be pokes and access blood and you're up there and you're just a goat, you know, I'm in there and they, they're, I got two on my hands, on my arms, I'm stopping up there every day, let the kids practice on me. So, you know, again, the, the whole experience and what they get to do is so different because they're trying to get your lobotomy license, right? Yep. Okay. You know, so that's what's cool about it is that you, that you truly are impacting their education to become what they want to become. So, any other questions for me? You were saying about... Tristan, you want to go up here yet? I'm just, I'm just kidding. Oh. Yes. You were saying about the age stuff, electronics is huge. Oh, yeah. That's what goes wrong, you know. It, it, that's what breaks, and, and, and so I went to Bowling Green. I got my degree from Bowling Green. I'm out working on race cars and tractors, and it's like time. Yes, it is. It's, it's we wild. Just, we 
you find out, okay, this is it's in electronics somewhere, we got to call somebody. <laughs> yeah, and it's and it, and every program. Is, I mean, every program has its needs, and definitely some programs are more expensive to run than others. But I will tell you this, and and I'm not letting the cat out of the bag. It, it, I'm in the infancy stages, but I met with Miller Brothers Construction. I was on a conference in Columbus, came back up with Miller Brothers. I found out that in the next five years, they said almost 60% of all construction workers are going to be retired in the next five years in the state of Ohio. And I was like, we should have started a, a, a heavy equipment program five years ago. But right now, we're on this expansion program. I can't invest a whole lot of time into a heavy equipment program. I'm going to tell you, we, we're already behind on that. So, all right, now, enough about me in Four County, okay? So, I have some students here to join us to kind of share. You just want to walk up here? You got your big voice on? Oh, yeah. Okay. <laughs> so, thank you. Okay. My name is Trista Bond. My parents are Jamie and Corey Parker. Um, at Hicksville, you see me on the sidelines cheering for the Aces, and I also dance at our local studio uptown. Um, the program I am in at Four County is Health Careers. So with that, I am a part of our organization called HOSA, and that is, stands for Health Occupation Students of America. And recently, I just went to the state conference and placed fifth in the state, which is super awesome for phlebotomy. Um, we are currently working on our phlebotomy license, but with Four County, it allowed me to get multiple certifications, such as my STNA, HIPAA, OSHA, phlebotomy, and so many more. Um, in the future, I plan on attending the University of Cincinnati for nursing, my BSN, and then I'll go on for my master's with hopes to become a midwife. So, thank you.
regular mechanic work and everything, and I just wanted to do something that I didn't know too much about, so I still mechanic work, though. Um, I really enjoy how we got to do the eighth grade tours, and I was able to go around and show all the eighth graders everything about my lab and get them to interested in going to Floyd County. And then my future goals, I am signed up to go to the Army for three and a half years for to be a mechanic. Thank you for arranging this, and uh, good luck in your future endeavors. Thank you. Uh, we will discuss